Hi everyone. If you're new to this channel, I'm Phil, co-founder of EZA. If you're already a subscriber, then welcome back. I'm here again after a break with this brand new video. I've also upped the video quality, bought a new mic right here, and I'm trying to up the quality for 2021. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to revise for mocks. This video is gonna be slightly different to the ones I've done before. Usually I focus on long-term revision strategies, tactics that actually help you learn and retain info. Stuff like active recall, spaced repetition. But sometimes we don't always have time for that. Sometimes we just need to get top marks in exams without putting in the slog. One example is the mocks that are coming up in a couple of weeks. Let's face it, lockdown's been pretty tough. Time off school, less contact with teachers. And again, probably a lack of motivation, to be honest. So is it possible or is it impossible to get top marks by putting in a fraction of the effort and doing it pretty much in warp speed? What I'll say is what I'm going to tell you isn't going to be guaranteed to get you top marks and you will need to be really careful using it. But let's face it again. If you're watching this video, you probably don't have time to spend weeks or even months revising. You probably only have a week or maybe even days. Well, hopefully not a couple of hours. If you've only got a couple of hours, this video probably won't help you either. But without delaying anymore, let's get started. Seeing as you don't have time for a long series of tips, I've boiled everything down to just one thing. Ready? Past papers, past papers, past papers. These are the holy grail of revision, the most invaluable resources that you can find. They're never gonna lie to you about what is or isn't gonna come up in the exam. So doing past papers is just like eating vanilla ice cream. You can't go wrong, except you can overdo eating ice cream, but you can't overdo past papers. Simple enough, right? So now you know the secret. This is gonna be a pretty short video. So you just do a past paper or two and that's it. Well, not quite, right? So I'll just give you two tips on how to optimize doing past papers. And the first one is use the mark schemes. Unless you're doing a really recent past paper, mark schemes are gonna be available on the exam board's website. So once you've done your practice paper, go through the mark scheme. The reason this is so crucial is because of another exam secret boards and teachers won't tell you, which is that your exam script is marked by robots. Can you believe it? Well, not quite robots, but humans who've been marking so many exam scripts that they're effectively no more than robots. So think of these people. I mean, they're just sitting at home. They're marking probably four or five hours of exam papers straight, and they turn into robotic scanners looking for keywords or numbers that match what's on the mark scheme. So you've got to write down exactly what the examiner is looking for. Otherwise, they won't give you the mark. They'll simply scan over it. This might seem annoying, but actually you can use this to your advantage. Because your examiner is effectively a robotic scanner, you can, like any machine, trick it. And the way you do this is by feeding into the robot exactly what it's looking for, the keywords and numbers on the mark scheme. And as long as you cover those, you'll get the marks. End of story, no questions asked. And that's why if you know what the examiner is looking for, and you can know this because you can download the mark schemes, you'll be able to get full marks without really understanding whatever topic you're being tested on. Pretty crazy, right? That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. But some of you are probably thinking, what's the point in doing past papers, right? They're past. What's Phil talking about? The paper they set in 2019 or 2017 or 2018 isn't going to be the one they set in my mock. And that's where you're wrong, sorry. Again, this is another secret exam boards won't tell you, which is that pretty much the same questions get asked year in, year out. Now, they're not gonna come up in consecutive years. For example, 2018 and 19, they're not gonna come up in that way, but they may. And also, they will be cycled. So for example, every two or three years, the same questions will show up, maybe with slightly different wording, but same mark scheme and answer. So by doing past papers, you'll get super good at recognizing these. So by the time you come to sit the exam or mock, you'll basically be breezing through the paper, just reeling off the points you've seen before. Be careful, stay alert, and make sure you're not answering the wrong question. For example, you might think that it's the one you saw in the 2018 paper, but actually they're asking a slightly different one. But apart from that, you pretty much can't go wrong. So that's all settled then. You go and you do past papers and you learn the mark scheme. But if you're pressed for time, then you need to do all of this super quickly. And the big question is then how many you need to do, which leads us on to optimization tip number two. 
Now, this is really going to depend on your base knowledge, but assuming you're actually doing the past papers and focusing, then you shouldn't really need to do more than a few years worth of papers. And to be honest, just like you don't want to be eating really old vanilla ice cream, you also don't want to be doing really old past papers. Reason being that syllabuses can change, so best to stick to the more recent ones. There's a lot more to say, but I'll leave it at that. One big secret and two tips to help you execute on it. So what are you waiting for? Stop watching this video, go find those past papers, be it OCR, Edexcel, or AQA, or whatever other three syllable exam board you might be taking. Seriously, do lots of past papers and you just won't go wrong. Good luck, thanks for watching, and if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.